Welcome to GQ Car Awards. <laughs> So here we are, the most colossal building I think I've ever been to. Now this is an MOD base and the hangar I'm currently in right now is where the incredible Hercules airplanes used to reside. News to me is it's recently been bought by Aston Martin and this is where the new factory for the DBX, their new Aston Martin 4x4 will... Today is very much photo shoot day. <laughs> things like that happen. Pretty standard photo shoot, uh, having uh, 911R doing a donut around you. So I think it's about time that we went and actually looked up close at some real special cars. TDF please. Yes, <laughs> that is the Aston Martin Nebula, F12 TDF and 911R. <laughs> I mean, in what world does that happen? <laughs> anyway, now, believe it or not, this is the first time I've even sat in one of these cars, which is a shame um, because uh, regular subscribers to this channel will know that I own the standard F12 uh, and I want nothing more than to experience an F12 TDF. Everything I've read, everything that people have told me about it, it just sounds absolutely incredible. It sounds insane, mildly scary. Um, but just, yeah, as an owner, I really want to drive one. I just, so anyone out there, because Ferrari just won't lend me one. This is theirs. They won't let me drive it, which is such a shame. We've got it here today on an empty airfield and I'm not allowed to drive it. And imagine, imagine that. Imagine the content we could create. But no. So uh, yeah, anyone with an F12 TDF, seriously <laughs> who's interested in letting me drive it that would be absolutely fantastic this is the kind of cool thing that happens you'll be chatting in a tdf and along comes an m2 now then back to tdf i'm going to close this for the full immersion experience uh first thing that strikes me compared to mine is vast array of carbon and it's the matte carbon too beautiful finish matte on the paddles as well there's so much carbon sculpture here also they've put some proper challenge race car bucket seats in what is a conventional gt car layout once again i'd love to experience what they're like i would imagine they hug you beautifully although these feel like they've inspect for the um, larger gent but yeah it's just a beautiful place beautiful place to sit earlier on you heard it start up phenomenal sound <laughs> Uh, I would go so far as to say it even sounds better than mine, which has an upgraded IP exhaust on it. It unlocks the character of that car no end. Anyway, there's about 20 other awesome cars outside there, so let's go check out some cool stuff. just gives you an idea of the significance and how special a GQ car awards photo shoot is. Now, I was going to save the best to last, but it is part next to a TDF. And let's face it, you're not going to see a picture like this anytime soon. This is still uh, in concept form. As you can see, that exhaust is not real. Uh, neither is that engine. But from the people I know at Aston Martin, this is 90% true to form. Obviously the components will make it look and feel different when it is eventually live. Oh yeah, and that, that by the way, loud thing interrupting my take. That is a uh, one million pound rebuild of a Jaguar XKSS. Uh, yes, beautiful thing. We'll get around to that in a minute for those guys that get into classics. I want to shut up. We'll go back to Nebula and retake. 
Okay, so here it is, the AMRP001. A catchy name, I know. It's currently codenamed the Nebula and is a true through and through hypercar. It's actually having a bespoke V12 engine built for it. The idea is it's going to have a one to one horsepower to weight ratio. So it's going to weigh 1,000 kilograms and be 1,000 brake horsepower. I mean, the figures that they're quoting on this are mad. Supposedly going to be pulling sort of F1 Gs which means anyone who is incredibly fortunate enough to be able to buy it will have to be a incredibly good driver to get the most out of it. Just check it out, it's absolutely incredible. an F12 and a Nebula back to back earlier. In what world does that happen? Pretty special stuff. Anyway, I'm going to uh, now go and check out the only classic car that's here. I don't know much about it, so I'm going to go find someone who does. I am here with Jason Barlow, who's going to tell me a little bit more about the XKSS. But first of all, you're from GQ and you're the... Well, I'm a car columnist on GQ. And have been for a okay. long time. James. Long time, yeah. okay. Long time being. Let's not dwell on that too. Okay, much. Like, okay. You know, <laughs> many, many, right, cool. many years. Speaking of old, let's talk yeah. about this car. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm not as old as the XKSS. No. In some ways, actually, yeah. you could argue that this is the, this is the original supercar. Okay, okay wow. so the XKSS okay. was, was Steve McQueen's, and you've probably yes, heard of him. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> of course you have. Uh, one of the great icons of all time, yeah. uh, screen, star screen and stage. The XKSS was his favorite road car. He had various Ferraris, yes. but there's, and there's a very iconic image of him sitting in an XKSS. Okay. This car um, was a, it originated to 1957, but it's an interesting story. There was a massive fire at the Browns Lane factory in 57, I think. February 57, March. Wow. Anyway, um, and uh, I think 16 cars were destroyed. I may have the numbers slightly wrong. Okay. A batch of uh, gorgeous uh, XKSS. They went up in flames. Wow, okay. Um, what's happened recently, I think, is a lot of people, I mean, this would be something that would be worth chatting to you about. You know, yeah, yeah. people are kind of rejecting kind of uh -huh. contemporary supercars because they're yeah, they're yeah. too good, they're sure. too fast. Yeah, yeah. They're not lacking emotional soul, enough. Lacking, lacking soul. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Sure. So what's happening is um, there's the kind of resto mod. Yes. So there's people who kind of buy knackered old things and, and, sure. then, and then fit them out and spruce them up. And spruce them up. Yeah. Or you do what Jaguar is doing, which is they take the chassis numbers of those cars that were destroyed in the oh, fire right. and, they, and they effectively reincarnate them. Wow. So if I told you, this car is identical down to every pop and rivet to the original late 50s car. Absolutely oh identical. Christ, so it's a very significant yeah. car then? It, it wow. is. I mean, this is chassis zero, so this is a kind of pilot car. <laughs> oh, wow. okay. Um, right, and then, okay. They're, then they're going to build, I mean, they're, yeah. all, they're all sold. Okay. And then Aston Martin have announced they're going to build a continuation yes. uh, DB4 GT. So well, how much are the originals now? Apparently there's one for sale at the moment for $18 million, so around £15 million. Okay. Yeah. So... You, you've, got, you've ordered yours, haven't you? <laughs> God, I know yeah. the guy who's selling it. So, yeah, yeah, well, I, I ordered yeah. two, one to drive yeah. and one to keep. In the other the thing about this is um, this is basically a road going version of the D-Type, which, okay. uh, which is which is won them all. Um, I did the Milli Milli in the D-Type uh, last you? year. It was mega, yeah. Oh, what an um, experience. That must have been unreal. Yeah. Uh, it was. It's hard. Fantastic. It's hard work, but it's... Yeah, it looks... It's, it's the best. Very hardcore. You, 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 you're never so happy to be so yeah. exhausted as you do wow. when you do the Milli Milli. So, yeah. Um, so, the XSS is a road going D-Type, basically. Um, and I would very much want this car. I want it. <laughs> Can't drive <laughs> it. Too, let me us drive too. it, though. Won't they? No. Uh, earlier on, when I was doing a take in the TDF, bearing in mind it's, well, all the way over there. Yeah. You see that tiny little yellow blob over there. Um, I was doing a take inside the car uh, and it sort of droned over what I was saying. <laughs> it's, it's that loud. It's a very noisy car. Fabulous. No, all right. Gorgeous. Thanks for that. Right. Because there's a photo shoot going on, they turned the lights off, uh, which means, yeah, for filming in here, not great. Um, which means I'm going to hop in the back of long wheelbase Bentley Mulsan. It's the poshest tank I have ever seen. Had a quick sit in it earlier. It's, it's, it's sort of like first class meets hotel suite. <laughs> Honestly, you got to check out the features in this car. Uh, let's just hop in the back of this because this car is all about being in the back. 
just check out this. Uh, first of all, let's just look at how long the sort of leg area is. I can pretty much, yeah, well, pretty great extension there. With this amazing solid mahogany table. Look at it, and it just retracts in there like that. And the whole, this, this here is a TV that pops up. Um, I'd love to show you how that, was that, is that it? Ah, oh, there it is. What do you know? <laughs> whole car's got built-in Wi-Fi, so you're always on the internet. Now, I mean, just look at everything, the attention to detail. Now, I believe in here, I mean, look at these beautiful stainless steel tables. Now, this is a pop-up take. Look at that! Look at the... That in itself deserves an award. The table bracket. Look at it all just, I think it folds out. I don't know. Oh, wow. I feel like I'm in a Linley showroom. Okay, there it is. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. The whole thing just look, swings around here conveniently. So you can be on your laptop. Speaking of feeling like I'm in a hotel room, check this out. It literally has like a sort of hotel style. Let me check. This. Yeah, yeah, the BBF champagne flutes. There you go. Like, yeah. These look like whiskey glasses or something. <clears throat> but I'm aware that, I mean, in terms of attention to detail, the underneath of that glass is the same as the wheels on the that's, uh, on the car. Wow. I mean, that's pretty. Oh, there's a good way to that, isn't there? Great weight. Yeah. Yeah. You need a weighty glass. Don't don't you just you? <laughs> you do. You know. And if you look just down there, in there as well, there is actually space. So obviously, for two champagne bottles. Um, yeah, so yeah, very can... much the car to be driven in though. And that is the end of our day. It is getting pretty chilly inside this hangar now. It's really, really is starting to uh, cold up because they've opened both doors, meaning, uh, yeah, the draft is coming through pretty heavy. So there's only one cure for it, really, uh, which is some uh, hot, hot donuts to keep us warm. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Ciao.